Good morning and welcome to Unity of Elise Ovier. Kelly Chaplin, and I'm happy to serve as your platform assistant this morning to our Reverend Margaret. Before we get started, please help me welcome Lou Savage, who has our announcements this morning. Remember, Lou, you do this every week? Okay. <laughs> Actually remembered this time. Tom. Okay. I was going to say something about that song. Uh, something about. Oh yeah, cocktails. Sounds like a cocktail bar there. So the, I, I was saying to Rob, the only thing we need is a blender, because <laughs> that's the one thing you hear. You hear. You do. Let's fire it up for the next show because they don't feel right at home. Well, let's see, what have we here? A Course in Miracles, second and fourth Thursdays. Mark, are you the facilitator? Great. 7 to 8.30 p.m., second and fourth Thursdays. If you'd like to join that group, talk to Mark. Okay, what else? Oct October 19th. Important, don't show up at 9.30, because there service from that point on. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, on the October 19th, 19th, the guest will be Reverend Beth Ann Suggs, who's a classmate of Mar R Reverend Margaret's. Hmm. An expert in building relationships with people. So it says here. The topic of our talk will be The Hero's Journey, a book that you should read. Beginning January 4th, 2015, Reverend Leslie Bradshaw will be facilitating a 12-week class on The Artist's Way, another good book. So that'll be from 7 to 8.30 p.m. That'll start January 4th. For personal prayer support, who is our chaplain today? Leslie, my favorite chaplain of all time. She'll be here to, uh, to help you with your chaplain needs. And Jan Sobel, where are you? There you are. So this is your last reminder, next week we party. Next week is the celebration for Reverend Margaret's retirement, and it's going to take place, as you all know, because you all have memorized this and you all have it written on your calendar. It's directly after the service in the lobby, mom's catering, kind of a lunch, finger food, um, mimosas, sparkling cider, just absolutely yummy, delicious, fun and we'll have an opportunity to say goodbye and to celebrate with uh, Reverend Margaret. Um, there is still the paper in the back, the rainbow paper. If you haven't already, take a couple sheets, take a sheet, um, share some thoughts, share some feelings that you'd like to share with Margaret. We're making a memory book. You can bring those to the service and put them in the box, or you can just bring them to the party and there'll be a table. Um, anything else? I think that pretty much, okay. Oh, Lou has. Okay, RSVPing, and it's in your insert, just the web, the uh, email address for the church, and that would be great, because we c kind of have no idea. Oh, okay, 45, wow, that's going to be fun, fun, fun. So, yes, if you haven't already RSVP, do do that to give Bill kind of an idea about the food. Um, and any other questions, Lou? No? Okay, all right, we'll see you next week. Well, I hope you're all going to be there. I want to be there. So you all need to be there. Um, each Sunday morning, our children meet to learn unity principles through art and stories. We always keep them in our hearts, and each Sunday is a special blessing. Here at Unity, we tell our children, you are God's perfect child, and I love you just the way you are. Let's say that together. You are God's perfect child, and I love you just the way you are. Please remember our children and our youth education team in your prayer time this week, and don't forget there's still a small, wonderful child that loves every one of you. At Unity of Aliso Viejo, we greet you in the name of all that is beautiful and sacred, where we embrace all spiritual paths that teach love. Unity offers a positive path for spiritual living, and welcome, welcomes I'm sorry, Unity offers a path for spiritual living and welcomes people of every creed, color, ethnicity, age, socioeconomic background, sexual orientation, and people with disabilities. Unity leaves no one out. 
We also like to say that you are not here by accident, but by divine appointment, and we are grateful that you kept your appointment with Spirit this morning. Now, Reverend Margaret will open our service with prayer. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, it's so good to see all of you and feel your energy this morning. So let's go within now, acknowledging the loving presence of God that is within us and all around us. And today we are learning to let go so that we can be open and receptive to all the new good God has in store for each one of us. And so we breathe in deeply, and as we release that breath, let's just let go. Breathing in, letting go. And we are open and receptive, sweet spirit, to all the good you have ready to bestow upon us and on our wonderful ministry. Thank you, God. Amen. Our soloist just came back from kayaking on Yellowstone Lake for a week and a half. It was so challenging that she said after she was finished, she was a totally different person. That so often we don't realize that we are capable of so much more. So would you please help me welcome the new Kathy Hoy. <laughs>
you, Kathy. You think if I went kayaking, you'd do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time for the good news. Kelly has the microphone, and she'll bring it to you. If you have good news, just raise your hand. Betty's got good news. I wanted to call attention to all the beautiful people in the church since I've given up writing. So many people, many people volunteered to pick me up. And not only for me, they have done it for several other people. So I think that's really terrific. Carol brought me to my, this morning and different people, different times. So that's beautiful. We are a glorious spiritual community. We truly are. More good news. Well, I just got the confirmation of my youngest sister visiting from Mexico City. In a I haven't seen her for two years, so I'm very happy. Wonderful. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, oh, 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 Mark has good news. Yesterday I had the interesting experience of going to a laughter yoga class down on Laguna Beach. And yeah, it sounds funny, but it was. A lot of fun. You can get a lot of energy from laughing. And we did laughing and we told jokes and gibberish, which was pretty cool. And I also wanted to remind people who are interested that this Wednesday is the Laguna Beach full drum circle, m full moon drum circle. So if you like drums or you like dancing or you just like the full moon or you just want to go out, we'll be down there and I'll be giving away free hugs. Great. Thank you, Mark. Kelly's on her way this way. <laughs> Rob has good news. I just have a quick, quick thing to say. If you're looking for something to do today at 3 o'clock, I'm going to be playing a concert with um, a couple really great people over at the Norman Murray Community Center. And it's a fundraiser for Mariana Giordano. I don't know if you know Mariana. Um, she's had a lot of struggles, but we're raising some money for it. So it'll be a terrific concert with Pam, uh, Pam and Ray so, and myself. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, it's at off La Paz on 5 South in La Paz, and you make a, you make a left. Oh, great. Sure. Thank you. Mission yeah, Viejo. Far. Mission Viejo, yes. Yeah. So it's not far. And it's only $20 a ticket and, or 6 for 100 Great. Right? Okay, good. Thank you, I, Rob. It's not math for me here, okay? <laughs> what time does it start? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Thank you. Marilyn has good news. I had my first piano lesson by the infamous Lou, in 55 to 60 years, it's been that long. Wow. So <laughs> it tells my age. So I think I need a lot. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Lou. A few weeks back, I shared that my friend Monica in Alabama was undergoing uh, some pretty serious back surgery. She had that surgery on September 10th. And um, the doctors were able to get all the tumor out and the pathology report came back negative, so she's cancer-free. Um, they had to cut a, a number of nerves, though, um, which she's now going through rehab to uh, relearn how to use her left leg. But uh, other than that, um, and the good news to me is that they got the tumor out. It's not cancerous, so I'm just uh, I'm very thankful for that. So. Thank you, John. Answered prayer. <coughs> Rick. We got to play hooky for part of the day yesterday. I had to go preview a couple of houses in Newport Coast for a client moving in this area. And then we wandered down the Coast Highway to Laguna Beach, walked the Coast Highway, stopped at a couple of places, had a cocktail, had some appetizers, enjoyed the ocean view, and stayed until the sun was setting and the moon was coming up over the arch of Main Beach with all the lights in the buildings. It was just a great afternoon, peaceful evening, and then we came home and I cooked dinner. <laughs> uh, the world is so beautiful and sometimes we forget to enjoy it. Yeah. Vaughn has good news. Uh, this is, this is uh, kind of weird news. Um, <laughs> first of all, there's no bad news. Um, I have show cops and he's shown them all over California and Los Angeles. The weird thing is, the first time he came down to visit, we're driving down Lake Forest, or El Toro, we heard a honk and a guy was behind me. 
my son. Now, I figure he came from Fort Foster City up in uh, San Francisco. Well, this week, last week, same thing happened. We're climbing up, and we heard a, hon a, a honk of the horn, turned around and looked, and it's my son again. <laughs> now, this is a period of maybe six months. The other, the other year, well, six years? Oh, my God, I've been missing something. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's, the odds of that happening are probably are about 150 billion to one. Twice, happening twice. And we'll take it. So um, thanks for being our <laughs> wonderful minister for all these years. And I want to say that. We'll miss you. We love you big time. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say he came. He comes down with these cars for cruising for the cure uh, for prostate cancer at the uh, Orange County Fairgrounds. So, and uh, I, I used to do the uh, walk for the uh, Coleman walk, uh, and he came down for that. So, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> Mimi has good news. <laughs> um, my news comes from Chicago. Cindy wanted me to tell everybody that um, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, to please tell everyone to get their mammograms that she did and she's still here to celebrate this month today. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Stephanie has good news. Yes. Um, this is a coattail, actually, <clears throat> on all the good, the good healing of cancer. Um, some of you know that I do home hospital teaching, and one of my students uh, has been in chemo for um, Hodgkin's disease, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he got the message, or he got the news, that he is cancer-free and free to start his, his ra um, radiation therapy. So this is wonderful. I always love it when my students who often have cancer um, are not dying. You have <laughs> such a healing presence, Stephanie. You truly do. Oh, oh thank you so much. <laughs> no, God does this. Um, I just hang around. <laughs> um, then I'm going to remind you all that next week, although I'm not going to be here, my son Matthew is getting married. Yes! <laughs> and Cecile has good news. Kelly, you're getting a lot of exercise today. I will be brief. As uh, some of you know, we, uh, we just came back from, from Canada after a three-week uh, trip visiting my family. And uh, Randy was such a trooper since he doesn't speak the language. He just got along just fine with them. However, <laughs> uh, not so much with the, all the siblings. This was the first time in over 50 years that the seven siblings had gotten together. And um, challenging. Uh, however, I know that as I decompress, I will really uh, get to appreciate this special event. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, it's time for your good news. Uh, I'll try and keep this brief. Um, last week, I went to Rancho Santa Margarita City Hall to help support a friend who is opening up a new vocal studio out there. And um, she's been very enthusiastic and excited about bringing me in to do some a cappella stuff, as well as maybe some voice lessons. So it's a new opportunity for me. So I'm l really looking forward to seeing where the, that goes, basically. So. Well, Tom, before we comes. sing, um, I'd like to invite you forward to help me honor our musicians and videographer that are leaving us for a brief time. This is because of um, budget board felt necessary after much prayer, and we want to honor them because they're very special to us. So, wow, that's really loud. 
So first service, um, I spoke honestly off the top of my head. Um, I'm going to try to do that again, um, but I apologize if it's repetitive. Um, Alex, thank you so much for coming in and resuscitating a video program that was flatlined at that point. We were having all kinds of technical issues. Um, stuff wasn't getting edited and posted on the website. It just wasn't coming together. And uh, Alex was a sub, and he came in, and we have streaming services every week. We have edited videos that go on the website every week. Um, I really think that video is a great growth potential. I hope this is something that the church brings back sooner rather than later because YouTube is marketing in today's world. It just is. And so I really hope that we find a way to re-add that valuable service back. And thank you so much for sharing your time and your personality and sharing our time back at the uh, soundboard back there. It's been and fun. And I'd like to mention, too, uh, that usually when I'm not here, I'm at um, Unity Village doing the work of Unity Worldwide Ministries. Last week, I got to watch live streaming, and these guys are incredible. And so, Alex, we have a gift for you. Thank you. <laughs> and then, um, as a, there was a time, I, I've been here long enough that there was a time that um, we didn't have a full band. And uh, it, I remember that. These guys have been so impactful since they've been here. Um, it adds so much to our music to have a full rhythm section. Um, not only the sound of the rhythm section, but also the personalities. Um, Lou, you've been here for so long, and as I said in first service, there are going to be times that something's going to happen. I'm going to imagine Lou's reply or Lou's comment about it. Um, your musicality. You've added a lot every single morning as we get together with the singers, um, how to end songs that on the radio repeat to fade, how to transition between one section to another, um, Lou is a huge part of that uh, each week. I mean, we have sometimes different piano players. Rob can't always be here. Lou is the glue that holds the band together each week. So I really want to acknowledge that and thank you so much for all those years. <laughs> and, um, and Gary, you're one of the newest members of the band, but I got to tell you, it's been such a joy to watch you. Lou, Gary is one of my favorite people to watch while the band is playing because he has such a great time back there. And every so often the song actually requires a little bit heavier drums than you know just the generic boom chick that uh, a lot of songs are. And he just, he really is smiling. He's having a great time. Um, thank you so much. And thank you for your flexibility and thank you for being here. And I really, really appreciate it. And I really hope that this isn't goodbye. I hope this is, see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Gary is here through thick and thin. He's on crutches this morning, and he's still here. And I wanted to just share a brief moment about Lou. Lou's not only a magnificent musician, but just an incredible friend. Many of you remember um, Phil and Jerry Studebaker. And in Phil's later years, he had Parkinson's, which made it difficult for him to go out to eat because part of the symptoms are some drooling, and he would, would be very embarrassed. So Lou and Deborah would go to their home, make dinner, do the dishes. That was the way. They didn't want to not be able to take them to dinner. The, that's friendship. Don't you agree? Thank you, Lou, for all that you are. <laughs> time to sing. It's time to sing, and I think something happened to the microphone. <laughs> Let's all stand and sing Rainbow Connection. <laughs> But only illusions And rainbows have nothing to hide So we've been told And some choose to believe it But 
I know their wrong wait and see Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers and me Who said that every wish Would be heard and answered When wished on a morning star Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we be? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers. Before we're seated, let's turn to one another and offer each other a warm unity greeting. Please be seated as we relax into our time of meditation. Be still, the Spirit says. Be still. Know that I am God. When we are quiet, relax body and mind. We can hear that still small voice. And so breathe in, I am. Breathe out, relaxed. I am relaxed. Open and receptive. We are prepared to be in communion with the Lord of our being. And so we listen in the quiet, in the stillness, 
in the sacred silence. And now so very grateful for this time with the Lord of our being. Let us sing with Tom, sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweep Please uh, feel free to sing along if you know the words to this song.
Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, today we're on part three of our series, Essential Prosperity. We're talking about what the essence of prosperity truly is. Charles Fillmore said that prosperity was far more than money, that its true meaning is total well-being. Being healthy, being happy, having loving relationships, that's true prosperity. So I have a little humor. We like to start with humor. And this was uh, from a group of eight-year-olds who were asked, what are grandparents? Grandparents are a lady and a man who have no little children of their own. They like other people's. <laughs> they take us for walks. They slow down past things like pretty leaves and caterpillars. They show us and talk to us about the colors of the flowers and also why we shouldn't step on cracks. And they never say, hurry up. They have to answer questions like, why isn't God married? And how comes dogs chase cats? And when they read to us, they don't skip. They don't mind if we ask for the same story again and again. To try to have a grandmother, especially if you don't have a television because they are the only grown-ups who like to spend time with us. They know we should have a snack before bedtime, and they say prayers with us and kiss us, even if we've been bad. And this one, I think, is for Wayne, because some of you were here when Wayne spoke, and his grandson was right there with eyes as big as saucers. Grandpa is the smartest man on earth. He teaches me good things but I don't get to see him enough to get as smart as him. <laughs> well, we're talking about letting go of the past and making room for the new. And we know that if we don't let go with open hands and open arms, then we can't receive. If we're holding on, we're blocking our good. So in Philippians, Paul writes, but this one thing I do letting go of what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, letting go of what is no longer for our highest good and moving forward toward the good that God has for us. Sometimes we may be asked to let go of a person, maybe someone who's um, offered us an unhealthy relationship. Sometimes we're asked to let go of a place, um, our spouse has a promotion, and that means we have to move to another state. Or we get a promotion and have to move to another state. And sometimes it's a belief that we are asked to let go of. In the first year of ministerial school, we are, <laughs> and Leslie's shaking her head, we, they tear down every belief you think you've ever had. And then the second year, they kind of build you up again because they know there's so much to unlearn. So many of us have learned so much about God that's not true. And so sometimes it's the belief we have to let go of. But almost every day there's a letting go if we're going to be open for the new. Sometimes it's letting go of a habit that maybe once fed us but has started to hold us back. And sometimes it's difficult and yet joyous at the same time. Like when we send off our child for the first day of kindergarten. So precious and yet so scary for the parents, probably more for the parents than the child, to let them go to kindergarten, pushing the little chicks out of the nest. And then when it's time to take them off to college, oh, we're so happy on the way there, <laughs> and we cry all the way home after we leave them there. <laughs> Letting go and for the good. And then when it's time for daddy to give away his little girl in marriage, and we're so happy that she's in love, and yet she's going, it's letting go. And so it's letting go and being open for the good. When one door closes, we know the saying, another one opens. Helen Keller writes, when one door of happiness closes, another opens. But we look so long at the closed door 
that often we do not see the one which has opened for us already. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And in the Phillips translation, I love, this is my favorite. For if a person is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. I hope today that you will um, let go of the old, the past, and make room for the new. The first idea I want to share is to recognize the power of the past. The past has power, and sometimes that's why those habits are so difficult to let go or those unhealthy relationships are so difficult because we've been in them for so long. So um, recognize the power of the past. I heard a story of um, a vacuum cleaner salesman, and you've s probably seen them or at least pictures of them. And he knocks on the door, and the woman inside says, go away. I've got to show you my new vacuum cleaner. Go away. I don't have any money. And he's got his foot in the door. And he opens the door, and he comes rushing in, and he's got a bucket of horse manure, and he empties it on her carpet. And he says, ma'am, if this vacuum cleaner doesn't pick up every speck of this, I'll eat it with a fork. She says, well, hold on just a minute. They turned off my electricity this morning. <laughs> Sometimes we have an old way of being, and it's time to let it go. <laughs> and not all blessings are distributed equally. I saw a cartoon about a dog and a cat, and the dog was really harassing the cat. And the cat was running from the dog. And all of a sudden, she skidded to a stop. She turned around and barked. Not meow. She barked. The dog took off running. And underneath it says, sometimes it's very helpful to learn a second language. <laughs> <laughs> so letting go and embracing the new. Number two, practice and of course, this is a biggie. It's really, it's big for all of us. And if any of you think I am an advanced spiritual teacher, I'm here to tell you I'm not. I'm right where you are on this, on this topic of forgiveness. You know, we're having this big party next Sunday, and I saw the list of people who are coming. And on the list are people who I haven't seen for 10 years. And a few of those people, I remember saying to me, this spiritual community saved my life. It was here that I was able to get sober. It was here I was able to give up the childhood abuse. And then they're gone. And now if you see somebody you don't know, I don't want you picking on them, Wayne. <laughs> You know, I don't know how that happened, but I know for myself, if I had received that kind of healing, I would want to give back where I received it. But, you know, we all have places to go and things to do, and so that's one of the things I'm working on. You know, letting go. I don't need to know why. I just need to let go and forgive. So forgiveness is the second uh, one. Practice forgiveness. Gary Trudeau gave a talk at Yale University, and he talked about political correctness. And if we're not politically correct, sometimes we're the ones who have to ask forgiveness. This has happened to me more than once. Um, Gary Trudeau begins, Dean Kagan, distinguished faculty, parents, friends, graduating seniors, secret service agents, class agents, people of class, people of color, Colorful people, people of height, the vertically constrained, people of hair, the differently coiffed, the optically challenged, the temporarily sighted, the insightful, the out of sight, the out of towners, the Eurocentrics, the Afrocentrics, 
the eccentrically inclined, the sexually disinclined, people of sex, sexy people, sexist pigs, <laughs> animal companions, <laughs> friends of the earth, friends of the boss, the temporarily unemployed, the differently employed, the differently optioned, people with options, people with stock options, <laughs> the deconstructionists, the home constructionists, the homeboys, the homeless, the temporary housed at home, and God save us, the seniors permanently housed at home. <laughs> um, I was once telling the congregation about Bruce Carter coming to speak. And Bruce uh, is just a wonderful friend and somebody who I love dearly. And he's an engineer. And so I was telling everybody who didn't know Bruce that he was coming and he's the only engineer I know with a sense of humor. And sitting right in the second row, two gentlemen I did not know were engineers. But I heard about it. <laughs> and so I apologize profusely because they're both very funny. And then another thing I said when after I had done a wedding for uh, a parent of one of our members, and um, I was saying how spe it was a Memorial Day, and I was talking about how special it is to do a memorial service because people are so hurting and needing our message, which is so positive and uplifting and inspiring. And I said, often at a wedding, everybody's just waiting to get to the bar, and they don't hear a word you're saying. But at a memorial service, they really hear. And he left and said, she'd rather bury me than marry me. I'm not coming back to that <laughs> church. <laughs> Political correctness, another thing I'm working on. Um, there was a man who... Uh, went to the police station to report that his wife was missing. And uh, he said to the sergeant, I've lost my wife. He said, well, how tall is she? I don't know. She's not tall, but she's not short. Um, what does she weigh? I don't know, but she's not skinny. Uh, what color eyes does she have? I don't know. I never noticed. What color hair does she have? Changes with the seasons. He said, well, was she driving a car? He said, yes. A 2015 Corvette Stingray 3LT <laughs> with the Z51 performance package, red metallic paint with a 6.2 liter V8 engine and direct injection generating 469 horsepower, eight speed paddle shift with automatic transmission and GT bucket seats and has a very thin scratch on the right front door. At this point, the husband starts crying. <laughs> the sergeant says, don't worry, sir, we'll find your car. <laughs> oh, we recognize the power of the past, practice forgiveness, and unclutter your life. And you probably won't be able to read this, but it says, I am not disorganized. I know exactly where everything is. The new stuff is on top, the old stuff is on the bottom. You know, there are two animals that live um, in the streams and ponds of North America. One is the beaver, and the other is the river otter. And the beaver works all the time, from morning until night. The otter, on the other hand, plays from morning until night. And they're so funny. They're so cute. My sister and her husband have a a house on a lake up in um, Priest Lake, Idaho. And we love watching the otters that come right down by the side of the house, the little stream that comes down. They're hysterical. Now, these animals both have the same lifespan. Which one do you think enjoys it more? <laughs> so, if you're a beaver, I want to invite you to be an otter a little bit this week. And if you're an otter, you might want to be a beaver part of the time. So, unclutter your life, number three, work the law of circulation. A friend of mine has a grandmother who, when she stirs to make a cake, she can only stir one way, because she's afraid if she went this way, it would separate the eggs and the flour and the sugar, and it would be <laughs> either back the way it was. Well, we can't turn back time, but we aren't meant to. We're meant to let go of the past and stir into the future and... Just be open and receptive to all the good that God has for us. 
In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he writes, Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. This week, we go forward to live life with open hands, letting go of the past and making room for the future. And let's take a moment to do this inwardly. We thank you, God, for the law of circulation that helps us to let go and to accept. Thank you, God. Amen. long been all quiet out I've done my screams and shouts now back to missing you all over again I'm mourning our sweet revelry standing right here can
Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, gentlemen. And that was an original song that Kathy wrote. Thank you so much. <laughs> and this part of our service we call our Sacred Walk of Abundance. You'll notice that there are um, bowls of blessings on either side, so we invite you to come forward, take a blessing from the blessing bowl, and if you've brought a financial gift, to place it in the plate. Uh, and with each step forward, we invite you to give thanks for one of the blessings God has bestowed upon you. Now let us bless our gifts with our offering blessing together. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Amen. Now let us bless our offering by singing together our offering song, I Am So Blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so
closing song together, Let There Be Peace.